everybody thanks for stopping back by wild bird creative i have all my supplies stacked here for what i want to use my various ink pads as you can tell i've got fall colors going on i've got my stencils that i'm going to use and then i've got my scraps nothing Nothing too fancy, a photocopy, a gel print, a piece of map, a foamy on tissue paper, and another stencil on a scrap of tissue paper. I'm not sure I'm going to use that one. It may end up being too bright. Then I have this great old page from a dictionary. I don't even know how I ended up with this because I don't have anything that is this size. But here it is. So let me grab my glue stick and get this glued down. Just going to do it quickly along here. This is a minimal mess page project. I'm not going to pull out paints. So there will be very little to clean up at the end. Let's just get this on here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it so that it is fairly level. we go that makes a great background run a little bit more along here there we go and then let's place these Got some nice fall colors in this one. A little bit of orange and blue and black in that one. And then this one, mainly orange. Grab my little photocopy. I think I'm going to get rid of that little white edge there. I don't need it. Let's line that up. And I'm bringing this out beyond the edge just for visual interest. <clears throat> and actually, I stand corrected. I am going to use paint in this one. I forgot, I've got the deer stencil. Okay, anyhow, next thing I'm going to do is this little patch of blue right up here. And for this, I'll just carefully use my glue stick, working from the center to the edges, just slow and steady. See, I even tore it a little bit already just with my fingers handling it, but it's okay. Let me grab my brayer and go right over that rather than using my hand. Now, if you want it even more transparent, you can certainly use... Um, matte gel medium or Mod Podge or whatever your product of choice is. Let me put, let me see if I want this in here or not. I'm afraid it's too bold. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to bring in my Sean Petit stencil. I 
think I'll use this one. Get these all out of the way. I think this guy's not going to work quite the way I want it to. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one. Let me get my black paint and my sponge. Put my cap on this because I don't need to make a mess and we'll go from there. Okay, get this exactly where I want it and I'm going to use, this is just a 30 millimeter little stenciling brush, sponge, tool, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to come in and I like these for when I want fairly precise stamping because the pressure that you can put on the stick just really helps. Okay, keep going here, make sure that I get it. in all the little details. Let's take a look. There we go. I think that maybe a little bit more right there into the point of that one. There we go. Let me set this aside. Put it right into my damp container. And while I'm here, I'm going to use what's left on my little takeout tray palette and I'm just going to fill in the spots just connecting everything and you do have to go carefully in some of the tighter spots I can keep doing it here but beyond this I'm probably going to want an even tinier brush and get a little bit on here and just connect these last few spots. Dress up these edges a little bit. There. Now I am going to want this to dry before I move on, so I'm going to pause this, hit it with my little blow dryer, my craft dryer, and then I'll be right back. Okay, it is dry and ready to go, and I have, I don't know, I feel like this might be the Crafter's Workshop stencil. It's just leaves. This one, by the way, is a Sean Petit stencil, and I'm just going to lay it out, and let's start with the yellow. And I'm using my ink pad because it works really well for getting a nice soft tone on here and I'm just randomly choosing some there's no no rhyme nor reason to this Let me show you. You just end up with very, very light ones. And now I'm going to turn it and grab my orange. And come back in and do the same thing. And 
it doesn't matter if they overlap. You're just adding detail. I feel like I need some in here. One up there, and I'm breaking the edge on this too, so that some of them are coming in from outside the frame. Move this down here and do the same thing. And look how nice they look. Okay, let me lay that there and come in and do some that are yellow and I didn't bother changing the stencils direction this time because I really just wanted it to be these two colors because now I'm going to turn it and bring in red. And I won't want to use too many of the red. They're going to be a lot bolder. But I do want that pop of red in this piece. And I'll move it as I'm working if I see a spot that I think could really benefit from a leaf. And then I'm going to put it up here at an angle. And come in and just hit a few of these spots. It is a little tedious. This is not the most exciting thing, but it's also very calming. I think we all could use some calm in our days. Put one there. So you can see I'm getting a lot of leaves. Now let me put lids on things. Because the next one I'm going to use is going to be sepia. This will just be, again, a few for interest. You can add as many as you want. If you're going to use paint, you obviously can let the colors blend together. leaf there and another one and a little one and let's do one there too and then let's put one down here breaking the edge and let's do two here breaking this side oh you know what? I'm gonna I'm going to grab this one and fill him in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Close that up. And the next one I'm bringing in is like a wind stencil. Let's do it this way. And I'm just going to add a few of these. 
going to need to dig around and find a, a clean makeup sponge for this. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's just grab a brand new one. And this is just an old stencil and an old ink pad. This one happens to be Wedgwood Blue. And I'm bringing it outside the frame because breaking the edges adds interest, like coloring outside the lines. Let's put a few down here, coming in from the edge. And there we go. Cap on that. Set this aside. Then I'm just going to look and see if there are any spots that I want to add more uh, leaves to. One there. Let's put a little teeny tiny maple leaf down here. Makeup sponges are great because they are so thin and pliable. You can't go wrong with them. I think that that is everything that I want on this. I've got a lot going on. I've got a few that are overlapping just like they would in nature. This was a pretty simple piece. It wasn't really no mess because I did end up using paint for the deer. But all I've got to clean up are three stencils and five, five makeup sponges. That's it. Oh, and one tiny brush. And I've made a nice fall piece. I mean, just something different, something easy. One, two, three, four, five pieces of paper, three stencils, your ink pads or paints, and you've got a nice fall theme. You could add a word to it if you wanted. You could leave it as it is. It's up to you. Have a beautiful day. Get out your supplies. Create. Don't listen to the naysayers. Of course you can make art. It's not about what is beautiful to everybody else. Make things that please you and help you develop your skills. Thanks for stopping by. Wild Bird Creative.